You're watching Sunbelt Conference basketball on ESPN Plus, where tonight from First National Bank Arena in Jonesboro, it's the A-State Red Bulls playing host to the Golden Lions of UAPB. Brad Bobo, C.J. Pepper with you courtside for opening night. Opening night to a season, C.J. We weren't sure it was ever going to get here, but it's made it, and we get to start things out with in-state action, which is always fun, and we've got plenty of talent on both ends of the court tonight. Yes, we do, and it's going to be a great game. Uh, anytime you play in-state rivals, uh, everybody always wants to be the uh, head honcho in the state, so it's going to be a great game. Tell us about Joyce Kenderson from UAPB. Man, anytime you can score 24 points a game, uh, you're a great scorer. And if you can do that on the Division One level, uh, she, she's been out for two years, but looking forward to getting back and ready to play. So Kenderson is on the floor for the first time in three seasons. Meanwhile, year three at A-State for Jaira Washington. Again, Jaira Washington, man, her stats don't show enough of what she do for Arkansas State. Uh, she's a great playmaker for them, plays great defense, and she also scores the ball when times need it. She's a third-team preseason all-sun belt pick, and this is a matchup of a couple of second-year head coaches. Don Brown led UAPB to seven wins. They tripled their SWAC win total from the year before in her first season. She's also been the head coach at Shorter University and at Prairie View, where she led them to an NCAA tournament. Meanwhile, Matt Daniel in his second season coaching is his hometown, his third Division I head coaching job, and he led UCA, his first job, to the biggest turnaround in the country in year two, trying to do the same thing here at Arkansas State. So it's taken longer than expected. Who knows what will happen day by day, but these two teams did a great job of getting their rosters on the floor for opening night. This is Trinity Jackson battling for the opening tip into the hands of A-State, and Jaira Washington missed the layup. And it'll go out of bounds yeah. to UAPB. Hey, just a little excited. Uh, get back on the floor playing ball. So she missed the easy layup. Uh, she probably won't miss that again, getting the shot that easy. As a player, how keyed up are you for opening night? Oh, man, it's nothing like it. Uh, you practice long and hard the whole summer and getting out conditioning. You're just ready to go and play. So Golden Lions on offense for the first time. This is Kenderson. And CJ told you, played her first three seasons at Texas Southern. She was fourth in the country in scoring as a junior at better than 24 a game. Comes up empty on the corner three, and A-State has the board. Here's Morgan Wallace. She'll let loose from three too long. A-State's lineup tonight, three returners and two transfers who were in here and set out a year ago as the trailer three wouldn't go for Walker, and probably not to be too shocked. Nobody's gotten one to go yet. Yeah. Said the juices are flowing. Man, again, look, those girls are just ready to be out there. Been practicing against each other. Now they're going to get uh, somebody else, and so they're excited. Especially this season. On top of that, you know, you'd already be three or four games into the season by now. Yeah, no doubt about it. So, again, they're just ready to play. You know, at the beginning of the year, your defense uh, t tends to be better than your offense. And so they're missing these shots early. Uh, it's not, you know, it's expected. Kenderson kind of in a crowd. And, boy, she's going to get pulled off the hook a little bit with a late foul call. As the shot clock was winding down, and she just kind of put her head down and dribbled into a crowd. The foul will go against Trinity Jackson from a little town called Hopkinsville, Kentucky. <laughs> hey, that's one of my favorite towns. Of, of, I mean, that's where I'm from, so I love that town. So it is going to put Kenderson to the line, looking for the game's first points and she's off the mark this is probably the weirdest thing i've ever seen in my life look at the benches yeah <laughs> the six feet separate. It, yeah you can see it there in your background look at the arkansas state bench how the separation wow. is missed them both and jackson gets the rebound there's look and as we go along tonight we can talk about all the things that are different about this setup but uh it's things people are happy to do to get to this point right here playing basketball trinity jackson muscles her way actually Probably down too low, got right under the backboard, but she'll head yeah. to the line. Hey, Trinity Jackson, it looked like she done trimmed down quite a bit. And, uh, you know, I know her mom and dad very well, so I can't say too much bad things about her, but it's all good. She seemed like she got in shape and she's ready to go this year. Yeah, she has really changed her body and just is most of the time going to be the strongest player on the floor. And she gets a friendly hop for the game's first point about uh, oh, less than 90 seconds in. 
Just a naturally strong player with really good touch. And uh, it's it's been a conditioning issue yeah. with her, and it looks like that she's bought into that in the offseason. Well, she bought in, and then Coach Daniel rewards her with the start tonight. And so right now she's doing everything that Coach Daniel wants her, I mean, wants her to do for right now. Change to the lineup uh, for UAPB. Maya Pete is in. And A-State with the first two points. And Pyburn hung up at the free throw line, so she throws up a shot too strong. Rebound corralled by Carolina Shedloska. And A-State newcomer into the lineup, and that's not a newcomer by no, any stretch. Yeah, yeah, that's Morgan yeah. Wallace to the rim. Once you let Wallace get in that right hand and go to the cup, it's hard to stop her from getting to that basket. Speaking of getting to the basket, well, that's what the Golden Lions do as Kayla Walker gets UAPB on the board about two minutes in, and then she got a little greedy in the backcourt and picked up a foul. So it's her first, team second, and A-State will inbound against the one-person press. So the inbounds to Jaira Washington. She got by a defender into the paint. And she'll pick up an offensive foul as give credit to Kennerson who stood near and drew the charge. Yeah, sometimes, Jaira, sometimes when she's going to the basket, she gets over, goes way too far deep down. And so they set up for the charge at time. Good defensive play by UAPB. Change to the lineup as this is Shakuria Orr into the lineup for the first time tonight. Orr, a redshirt sophomore out of Birmingham. And Kayla Walker will bring it into the front court. Early two-point lead for A-State, and that's a travel inside. Yeah. little happy feet for Maya Pete, and it'll go to A-State. Just over two minutes in on opening night here in Jonesboro. Glad to have you along. For the first of what we plan to bring you every A-State home game as the three-pointer wouldn't go for Shidloska, and UAPB has the board. Or... Around the top of the key, now down the paint, took a bump, and she'll head to the line. And it's going to be, I believe, two early fouls on Jaira Washington. And you see Matt Daniel already make the move as we're going to see Halani Cantone in for Washington with two early fouls. So there goes Washington, and here comes Cantone, one of the A-State freshmen out of Apoca High School in Apopka, Florida. So it's three team fouls on A-State, and it'll be Shakuria Orr at the line. And she knocks the first one down. If the APB plays well uh, first quarter, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Coach Daniel go to a 2-3 zone or a 3-2 zone to try to protect uh, Miss Washington from uh, getting another foul just so he can keep her on the floor. Yeah. Well, UAPB came in here last season and actually early on had a 10-point lead. Arkansas State eventually came back to win the game by 19. It was one of four games in which A-State won after trailing by double digits, and now both point guards with two quick fouls. And what's got to be frustrating for Don Brown is that Kayla Walker's got two fouls, and she was about 70 feet from the basket on both yeah, of them. Yeah, you could tell Coach Brown was not happy with that foul. Uh, just committed. And they're having a little conversation because Walker's now forced out of the lineup. So each team's point guard, two fouls in just over two minutes. And, and this is, Go ahead. No, I was going to say Arkansas State has to be careful because you better believe that you're going to get UAPB's uh, best effort with Arkansas State being the bigger school. Here's Wallace, got a step on the defender, got up underneath, threw it off the bottom of the rim, but the rebound chased down and now we had a stop in play and probably a shot clock issue. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and it had not reset. And that shot did hit the bottom of the rim. Yeah. So you gotta get those referees credit. They pay so much attention to detail. I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't have thought of that. This was uh, the lineup UAPB started with. Brought to you by Gamble Home. Those are the five Coach Brown rolled with first, including Joyce Kenderson, who we talked with in the, about in the pregame, and Kayla Walker, their number 24, who's already on the bench with two fouls. Here comes Peyton Martin. 
and Maya Love, Love out of Nelton High School here in Jonesboro. And yeah. CJ Coach Daniel was talking about Maya Love earlier and said, look, this is a kid that could start, but he loves the spark Maya Love can bring this team off the bench. She, she, she's a great player. I watched her play in high school uh, for three years, and she's just a great player. She does a little bit of everything, but her hustle gives the teams a spark. Errant inbounds pass picked off by UAPB. Here they come the other way. Long two is up and good, and uh, that may not be a shot a coach would love to see you take, but Orr knocked it down. Yeah, great mid-range shot. She took her time and went in for her. The Golden Lions with their first lead as Love is off the mark from the corner, and the rebound pulled down by Nisa Sam Grant. And boy, with a head of steam to the bucket, that's Kenderson who draws the foul and looks like she'll head to the line. Alani Cantone with her first personal. It's four team fouls on A-State in the quarter. With Kenderson averaging 24 points a game, Coach Daniels has already told his team, don't let her get going on the free throw line. So I know Coach is probably not happy with them following her. Uh, the scorers see that shot go in. It's hard to stop them. Yeah. Yeah, you got that right. As she had missed a couple of free throws earlier, hits the first one here, knocked them both down, and now that's five straight scored by UAPB to take a three-point lead. Wallace for the tie, wouldn't go, and in good position for the rebound. Here come the Lions. We'll stop and pop at the free throw line. Knocked yeah. down by Shakoria Orr. Hey, that's our sweet spot. <laughs> Around free throw line extended is our sweet spot. There's no, that's a great move. Getting Jada Stinson to the basket. The Memphis transfer with her first two A State points. And that stops the uh, UAPB run. As you see, Arkansas State's lineup tonight brought to you by Gamble Home as well. And that's the five on the floor right now for Matt Daniels' team. As Shot rolled off underneath for UAPB, and here come the Red Wolves. Here's Stinson, pull up, took a bump, shot wouldn't go. Trosty tot in the board. Good defense there by Morgan Wallace, and here she comes the other way. Pass ahead to Stinson. Switches hands, too strong off the back. Yeah, that's a great move. That's a great move right there. And again, the defense is better than the offense right now, but these shots will start falling. So a three-point Golden Lion lead as we approach midway here in the opening quarter. As Kennerson wanted rid of it. And now a hand check out on the perimeter is going to go against Cantone. And now she's got two fouls. So both A-State point guards in early foul trouble. And Matt Daniel has to go to the bench again as we'll see Carolina Shedloska back into the ball game. Well, the good thing about uh, Arkansas State, they have a bench. They have three or four people that maybe play shooting guard but can play point guard. So I think at that position, uh, they got a lot of depth there. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to see with when they come back sort of who the primary ball handler here. It could be Stinson, but, you know, Morgan Wallace is almost like a point forward. They're, they're, they're perfectly content with her handling the basketball. And also, uh, Maya Love was a high school point guard yep. as well. So. So it'll be interesting to see kind of who they run this offense through after the free throws, which are both knocked down by the Golden Lions, who now lead it by five. And it was Wallace and Stinson together in the backcourt beating the pressure. That's a dangerous pass that should Loska save for a state. Now Wallace switches hands off the glass and got it to go. Man, again, when she goes to the, the a cup, it, it's hard to stop her. She can get to the She's very savvy with the ball when she going to the cup. Back to a three-point Golden Lion lead here. And there's a steal by Wallace. That's one of her specialties as she goes in and gets the wow. layup. Morgan. Wallace, one of the best in the Sun Belt and steals, gets one there, and it's a one-point ball game. So a little spurt from Arkansas State with back-to-back -back buckets. And that ball knocked out of bounds. It will stay with UAPB after the media timeout. 4.18 to go opening quarter, back and forth early, and the visiting Lions grab a one-point lead.
you know, Bobo last year when Morgan would get the ball top of the key, she would keep going right. But this time she crosses over and go left. You can tell she's been really working on shooting the ball in her left hand, left hand layup this year. Wallace this with six early on as UAPB has the ball in a one point lead. Miss underneath what Peyton Martin just went up in a crowd. Wide jerseys for the most part and took that rebound. A State just uh, three out of nine from the floor. In fact, both teams at 33% here early on. UAPB now four for 12 shooting as we got a whistle. Looks like inside that's going to go on Joyce Kennerson, her first. And each, uh, well, actually, it's four UAPB team fouls. So it'll be the bonus both ways the rest of this quarter as we're going to see. Nisa Sam Grant back into the lineup for Don Scott's team. Don Brown, excuse me. Shakurio Orr back in too, so it's been a revolving door at the scores table here in this first quarter. Here's Stinson. Kick it in the corner for Shidloska who Pulls up with a tough floater on the baseline. Man, that's a big-time move, uh, pulling up and shooting that mid-range jump shot right there. Kind of like a floater. Yeah, it was. Carolina Shidloska with her first A-State points, and then UAPB turns it over on the other end. So A-State back on top. Red Wolves on a 6-0 run here about over the last 90 seconds. They've hit their last three shots after starting the game just 2 for 10 from the floor. Now a little change up defensively for the Golden Lions here. Wallace to Martin, and she scores underneath. Hey, when Martin gets the ball down low like that, she's hard to stop. Well, on the feed from Morgan Wallace, we talked about yep. you know, how she can handle the basketball like a guard. She showed it there with the assist, and now it's an 8-0 Arkansas State run, but a whistle and a foul underneath is about to put UAPB at the line. It's on Peyton Martin, her first, and so the bonus will be coming for UAPB. The Red Wolves haven't been to the free throw line yet. Actually, I checked that they are two out of two at the line. And now the Golden Lions, six out of nine at the line, so half their points here in the first quarter have been at the free throw line. Well, Coach Daniel's going to talk about that. Uh, so they won't, don't score so much from the free throw line. He wants them to play more solid defense. See the series history coming into this one. 28th meeting between these in-state teams. They'll play each other twice to start the year. Next one coming up down in Pine Bluff. Red Wolves lead the series with a big margin. And they lead the game here by one, but dueling turnovers is... It comes back Arkansas State's way. A State. Starting the season at home this yep. year. They're trying to win their 19th home opener in the last 20 years. There's some contact, probably initiated by Maya Love, but the foul's going to go on the other four. That's Jazeem Bethea. And that's the fifth team foul on the Golden Lions. So Maya Love, the sophomore out of Nettleton High School here in Jonesboro, will head to the line. Good stroke on the first free throw. Love was a player you, you talked about. We've all, we all saw her play in high school, and you knew her defense would travel to this level, and, and – I think as she continues to play, you'll see you know, her offensive game continue to develop. She didn't need it a lot in high school because she right. got steals and layups. Yeah, steals and layups. I mean, the girl could get there. It seemed like she could get down the court in five seconds, man. I mean, but she plays great defense. And that's, that's the kind of player that Coach Daniel like on his team. And so um, defense scoring offense. So it's a three-point A state lead with just over two minutes to play here in the opening quarter. Kenderson will bring it into the front court, got around Love, and then it's going to be tripped up. A foul. They're going to give it to Maya Love. I wasn't sure Love was the player that tripped her. Sort of a take your pick there between Love or Shidloska. 
Maya picks up her first foul. More free throws coming up for UAPB as we see Maya Pete back into the lineup. You know, Pete's got a brother that plays for the New Orleans Saints with okay. A-State's Demario Davis, and her dad had a six-year NFL career. Okay, okay. The freshman out of Chandler, Arizona, found her way to Pine Bluff. Henderson gets the free throw to go, and it's a two-point Red Wolves lead. And that's going to be a foul on Kenderson, who didn't love the call. Out near midcourt. It's her second, so she becomes the third player in the game with two first quarter fouls. And let's see here, CJ. What do you think? Uh, you know, that could go either way. And, uh, well, she's at home, so she got the home, <laughs> <laughs> home cooking. Stinson at the free throw line, first one's you know, good. It looked like Kenderson beat her to the spot, but you know that? Some, I, that's a no call to me. Again, Stinson was in the program a year ago, but sitting out after transferring from Memphis. Mm -hmm. She's also a Kentucky kid. You know, I didn't want to say that, man. I mean, you know, people say I just brag all the time about the Kentucky kids playing basketball, but it's one of those things we just – we had nothing else to do but play basketball. So. <laughs> now a four-point Arkansas State lead is uh, – the clock hasn't moved a whole lot here in the last couple of minutes this first quarter. Both teams have gotten to the bonus and gotten to the line. This is Kayla Simmons who had the ball. Now to Nisa Sam Grant. Orr puts it on the floor. And we're going to have more free throws coming as Shakuri Orr gets herself to the line. You know, and UAPB is being extremely smart, Bob. The referees are giving them the fouls. So they keep going to the basket and trying to get them to the free throw line to try to st stay in the game that way. Yeah, if you come across a game where you understand that the officials are going to kind of reward putting your head down and going, and your athletic team will yeah. put your head down and go. No doubt about it. And it's worked for the Golden Lions here in this first quarter. The bulk of their scoring has been at the free throw line. As Orr knocked another one down. And it's back to a two-point A state lead. So the Red Bulls have hit their last four shots, but it seems like it's been a little while since they've taken one. Meanwhile, UAPB at the free throw line, hanging in there despite the fact that they've gone nearly five minutes without a bucket. Here's Jackson strong to the rim, and she'll go to the line. When Trinity Jackson does that, it's, too many, it's not too many girls that can stop her from doing that. No, and Kayla Simmons is a strong player yeah. too, but, I mean, you just – and she, she's, you know, made her case is she's standing with her arms straight up. But, I mean, that was just a, kind of strong on strong there. Yes. And then her conditioning has got so much better. Uh, she's running up and down the floor, and she, she's doing well. Been impressed with her tonight. And she knocks down the first free throw. Did you get another look Again, there? Just, yeah. Strength against strength that time. But it was a great post up. Well, down low play, the beginning of the down low play is what matters. When you post up is when it matters. And that's uh, that rebound kept alive off the miss by Talia rolled on the UAB transfer. They stayed excited about her. She kept that play alive. Now Stinson from three. And the rebound goes to the Golden Lions. Just over a minute here in this opening quarter. And Shakuria Orr directs a little traffic. Good help. That time by Stinson, who stepped in there, but UAPB kept it alive. It's out of bounds, and we'll stay with the Golden Lions. Morgan Wallace back into the A-State lineup. By the way, worth noting, we're also seeing Jordan Brown, the JUCO transfer out of Fresno City College, in for the first time. She wears number five for Arkansas State. And speaking of first looks, we're going to get ours, too, at Zainabu Cham, the 6'6 
transfer out of Senegal who played at McKinnon Community College last year. As the catch and fire three wouldn't go and Chom unable to corral the rebound, it'll stay with the Golden Lions. Excited to get a first look at Chom. The ball comes loose and she collects the steal. And another foul in the backcourt. This one's going to be on Jazim Bethea. It's her second, and we'll shoot more free throws. The fans are going to get excited anytime you see a 6'6 kid out there. No doubt about I mean, it. That, that, uh, it gets people excited to see that. She's tied as the tallest player in the Sun Belt Conference this season. Wow. Well, the thing about having that length, uh, you may not get every shot. I mean, you may not block every shot, but you change shots as well. And, you know, that counts. As long as you're missing the shot, she's protecting the rim. One for two at the line as Trusty Totten will check in. He's the same Grant back in there as well. So a four-point A state lead, as you see about an eight-second difference between the clocks here. Neither team has had a field goal in the last two and a half minutes. It's all been at the free throw line. This is Ashlyn Green who gave the ball up left wing. Three-pointer up and knocked down by Trosty Totten. So that stops that string of no field goals in six minutes for the Golden Lions, and they're within one here with time winding down in the first quarter. Stinson into the paint, high off the glass. That shot was altered by Sam Grant. Stinson gets a steal, and then it's out of bounds to the Golden Lions with just under four seconds to go. A hey, great hustle by Stinson, though. She missed the shot. Oh, yeah. Driving kick, Stinson from the wing. Kind of high follow through, knocked it down. Or head of steam, has her shot blocked by Maya Love at the horn, and a lengthy first quarter comes to a close at First National Bank Arena, and after one, Arkansas State leads by one. We'll have the second quarter when we come back. Back in Jonesboro, where the first quarter of the season featured 24 free throw attempts combined by these two teams. And A-State with a one-point lead as we get ready for the second 10 minutes here. Take a look at uh, the preseason polls for both these teams. You see UAPB picked eighth in the SWAC. They finished eighth, uh, or excuse me, finished seventh a season ago. But... Uh, there's so many newcomers on this roster, and I'm sure people really didn't know what to make of Coach Don Brown's team as she overhauled the roster after her first season. Wouldn't surprise me at all to see him finish higher than that projected finish. Yeah, Wes, they're playing great defense right now, and she has a great game plan. Um, sometimes pressing them the whole court and sometimes just going that to a 2-3 zone, so they're doing a great job defensively right now at Arkansas State. UAPB held a state to 38% shooting in the first quarter, but the Golden Lions only went four for 14 from the floor themselves. That's 29% shooting. And the fouling uh, resumes here early in the second quarter. As that is a reach in on Shakuria Orr. Her first and the first for the team here in the second quarter. See, now their UAPB is in a 2 3 zone right now. And they get to the middle of it, but Maya Love stepped into that three-pointer and was called for the travel. You saw A-State was able to get in that soft spot, right? kind of inside out, but Love traveled on the shot. Yeah, just again, a lot of excitement uh, to get out here and play basketball, and so she was ready to shoot that wide-open jump shot at that time. But you see it went in, though. It did go in, so yeah. you, she saw it go in. Corner three goes in as Shakur Yor knocks it down, and Golden Lions go back on top. Or now with 10 points already in this first half. She's three out of four from the floor. Again, in the middle of that zone. This time Wallace puts it on the floor, and Nisa Sam Grant sends it out of bounds. Hey, yeah, she's, Morgan tried to go uh, to the basket, but her being a lot taller, she was able to block the shot. 14 on the A-State shot clock. They tried to lob it in, and 
What a catch in there by Chom, who couldn't get it to go. I didn't know anybody was going to catch that ball, but they <laughs> threw it toward 6-6, six, six, which is not a bad plan. Yep. Again, my love wreaking havoc up top defensively. Yeah. Here's another corner three, and that one's knocked down. This time it's Tyler, P Tyler Piber knocking it down. So back-to-back -back threes for UAPB from the exact same spot. The Golden Lions now lead it by five. Brown tries to answer. Her three a little bit long. Rebound pulled down by Totten. And so the Golden Lions feeling a little bit. And Maya Love picks up a foul coming into the front court. Her second. So A State, CJ has four players now with two fouls in the first 11 minutes and change of this one. Yeah, but X State, they got a deep bench this year. So Coach Daniel, he's not too worried. He can bring people in off the bench uh, to help them uh, score the point. Shidloska back into the Red Wolves lineup. She's up top defensively. So whip over the top of the screen, but getting to the bucket anyway and scoring is Shakuria Orr with her 13th point of the first half. Actually, her 12th. It's a seven-point UAPB lead. Sham the rebound, and she probably got away with the travel, and then she gets tied up. Mm -hmm. Yes, she didn't. She went strong with the ball, and so they were able to tie the ball up. UAPB, they're playing extremely scrappy. Ball for the Red Bulls, number 23, Trinity Jackson. It's an 8-0 run for the Golden Lions here in the first two minutes of the second quarter, and They've got the largest lead anybody's had in this one. So Chom sits down. That's Trinity Jackson's back in. And here's Wallace. She'll try a three. Jackson kept it alive, and Wallace Good. with the finish. Yeah, so Coach Daniels, he put Trinity Jackson back in the game. Seemed that they were getting offensive rebounds, and so put her back in the game. She got the rebound and passed it to Morgan and the ball went in the hole. First points of the quarter for the Red Wolves and the UAPB lead down to five and then the Golden Lions turn it over on the other end. That's the sixth turnover of the half for the Golden Lions. Red Bulls have it in the front court, down now by five. And a whistle stops play. Looks like a foul on Ashlyn Green. It'll be the first on the freshman out of Atlanta. And the second team foul of the quarter against UAPB. Coach Brown's been to Atlanta. Um, Phoenix, uh, she went all over to get her yeah, players. Huh? Both of these coaches yeah. got players from all over. We're going to talk more about that a little bit later. Nearly stolen, and then kind of a tough whistle here going to go against Bethea, and it's her third. Her third. Was really just well, trying to make a play. Yeah, both coaches, hey, they're, they're calling it the same way for both on yep. both ends, and so um, they're keeping control of this game, the referees are. Yeah, each team was – called for eight fouls in the first quarter and Stinson throws it out of bounds and that's the fifth A-State turnover here in the first half. Yeah, if you're going to see plays like that the first few weeks of the season from both teams actually you know you, the teams that just take a while to jail. Maraquita Cotton is in she's a junior out of Jackson, Mississippi handling the basketball. There's a Catch and fire three off the mark for Pyburn, and it's out of bounds to A-State. Here's Maddie Hatcher in for Arkansas State. That's Morgan Wallace right there, but she's going to throw the basketball to Maddie Hatcher, freshman out of Little Rock's Pulaski Academy. And if you're an A-State fan and that name sounds familiar, her <laughs> brother Lane was the Freshman of the year in the Sun Belt Conference playing quarterback for the Red Wolves last season. Yeah. Coach Daniel says she's an extreme hard worker. She works really hard. She's going to come in firing, and the three wouldn't go. Jackson the rebound, and then she swatted away 
by Sam Grant. Bodies falling down all over the place. Here's a three-pointer in that corner up and good again by Tyler Piber, her second of the quarter. UAPB's hit three from that spot all in the same footprint. Yeah, hey, look, they're shooting those three-pointers. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach, Coach Daniel go to a man-to-man -man zone. A man-to-man -man defense, excuse me. Another offensive rebound. Here's Hatcher for three, in and out again, and Sam Grant then got the rebound and threw a bad outlet pass. Here's Wallace inside for Jackson. She drew the foul, but I'm not real sure why she was fading away on that shot. Yeah, just off balance a little bit. Uh, where she caught it at, she was off balance a little bit. And, uh, but they fouled it from behind. So Jackson back to the free throw line. You see UAPB with that eight point lead. As Jackson's now three for five at the free throw line. Red Wolves have missed their last four shots. I think Trini Jackson may have hurt herself a little bit. She tried to set for a charge and fell pretty hard to the, on the floor. Yeah, she did take a pretty good spill down that other end right before that three-pointer for Pyburn. She splits the trip to the line, and I think maybe Matt Daniel sees the same thing as Jackson's going to sit down as we see Talia Roldan back into the lineup. Shakoria Orr is in the lineup as well. She leads all scorers with 12 already in this first half. As UAPB leads it by seven. A little up and under yeah. is good. Hey, that was a great low post move. Trosty Totten with the bucket, and it's now a nine-point golden line advantage. And that's going to be a travel called mm -hmm. against Shidloska. And one thing we've seen out of Matt Daniel here so far in the second quarter, CJ, is that he has not gone with any of his players with two fouls. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen Jaira Washington back on the floor. Haven't seen Peyton Martin back out there. So yeah. seems like unless something changes these last five minutes, he's trying to ride it out till halftime. Yeah, I think he's just trying to keep the game close until he get his seniors back in. And so, you know, the thing about it is, uh, some coaches once you get two fouls, they take you out for the rest of the first half. You know, some let you go get that third, but. He's letting them stay on the bench and waiting for the second half. Tyler Pyburn again out near that right corner for another three. And all of a sudden, UAPB is in here for the second straight year with a double-digit lead. They're up a dozen. And the Red Wolves are rounding out on another three-pointer, but a foul on the rebound is going to stop play. And it'll put the Red Wolves at the free throw line after what should be a timeout as Kayla Walker picks up her third, team's fifth. Bonus for A-State after a break in the action. And Matt Daniels hoping this break in the action will slow down UAPB. The Golden Lions have a 12-point lead on the road in Jonesboro. UAPB six for 10 from the floor in the second quarter. Four of their six makes have been from three, all in nearly the identical spot. The Golden Lions have ran out now to a 12 point lead as Talia rolled on at the line. And you see the preseason poll in the Sun Belt. Arkansas State finished seventh the season to go, picked there again this year. Rolled on, knocks down both free throws and the lead down to 10. You know, the coaches talk about Talia Roldan, and part of the reason Matt Daniel wanted to bring her in here is that you know she played you know, on a really good UAB program, and she, you know, she's accustomed to being in a championship culture, hoping that she'll bring that here to Arkansas State as the jumper is up and good for Piber. Shidloska will try for three, wouldn't go. And Morgan Wallace couldn't get the, the uh, rebound. It's interesting, 
you know, the one thing Matt Daniel wanted to do and his staff and from a recruiting standpoint is bring in more shooting. Mm -hmm. and, and let me tell you, once they have adjusted from high school or JUCO or even a, a different uh, team, um, they'll get better. That's an offensive foul. And if that is on oh, Nisa Sam Grant Nisa inside, Sam it's Grant. her third. The Red Bulls, despite not being a really good shooting team, took a school record 649 threes last year. Oh, wow. And so far in this one, they're 0 for 13 from deep. Wow. Well, hey, listen. Again, it's the first game for Arkansas State. And, again, when they, once they get the jitters out, I think they'll shoot a lot better second half. Well, and what you see is this right here is that people knew they struggled shooting, so what are you going to face? A zone. Mm -hmm. Now 0 for 14. Yep. I mean, people just dare them to take those threes. And off the offensive rebound, Stinson stops a long, cold snap. Well, the thing about it, too, though, is with the Coach Daniels team, even when they're not – Miss, when they're missing shots, they're going to give you a good effort. So as long as they have that effort going, they're going to stay in this game. Yeah, they've kept a lot of those three-pointers alive and scored second-chance points. As we go under three minutes, we've got a stoppage in play as the foul is going to go on Morgan Wallace. It's her first. Only the second foul of the quarter against A-State. More changes to Don Brown's lineup. Drive it in, pull up in the paint, and getting it to go is yeah. Trusty Totten. You know, they're getting, UAPB is getting a lot of confidence in going to the basket and scoring the bucket. Kayla Williams is into the lineup for the first time. And Hatcher gives to Shidloska. Now they'll give it to Williams. She'll try for three and comes up well short. Yeah, you kind of want to go up and down the court a couple times and get a lather first before you try a shot like that. Okay, Will's not going to get a lather on this trip. Yeah. That one, uh, <laughs> yeah, Coach, he wasn't happy with that. <laughs> you know, most coaches, that's what they want you to do. Get up and down the court a couple times before you just come out shooting. So here come the Golden Lions with a chance to add on to a 12-point lead. Kennerson gave it up over to Pyburn. She is had the hot hand that's helped them build this lead. And there's a travel, yeah. Yep. A little one, shuffle two, two. on the stop there by Simmons. She's made a couple of moves down low. They probably could have called a walk and, and let it go, but this time she got caught uh, traveling. So Maddie Hatcher's going to bring it into the front court. Hey, with these masks on by these coaches, Bobo, I wonder if it's going to be le less technical fouls. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That's gonna be something to watch. Yeah, and Maddie yeah, Hatcher three. hits A State's first three of the night. Trims the lead down to nine. That will be. Uh, that'll be interesting. As we have a block yeah. inside. I think. Hey, I, I seen Coach Daniel run after the referees a couple times. I don't think they could hear what he was saying. With those, when they have his mask on. So. Jada Stinson with her first team's third. Has, uh, oh, he took it off this time. Yeah, this time, yeah. <laughs> he wants to be no question about what he's yeah. saying. And Kennerson short on the first free throw. Again, we talked about Joyce Kennerson uh -huh. in the open. She had scored. Nearly 1,600 points in her three seasons at Texas Southern. Yeah. She'd averaged 17 and a half for her career, including wow. that 24 game average as a junior. But hey, I'm telling you, she, she had okay first half so far, but when you take two years off from basketball, it's mm -hmm. just tough on you. I don't care who you, how good you are. Wallace tried to drop it off inside, and that one was picked off by Kayla Simmons. Here is Kennerson. And she gets it blocked by Morgan Wallace. It'll yeah. stay with UAPB. Another thing you saw, probably got a shot of there, is kind of a different look. It's, you know, somebody stationed at both basket stanchions, mm -hmm. swapping out balls at dead balls as they're sanitizing each basketball and putting a new one in play. Wow. 
Wallace stutter steps through defenders, gets it to go with a foul. Yeah, man. And, and I'm telling you, her working on that left hand layup and the right hand layup, you don't know which way she's going this time. Look at that move right there. Took it up with the right hand, great move. Good finish by Morgan. And on top of that, it's the third foul on Kennerson. So not only does Wallace get the and one, but Kennerson's going to have a seat for the final 69 seconds of this half. And it's kind of an awkward landing for Wallace. You can, you can see she was kind of shaking a leg there a little bit as she goes to the line and tries to complete the three-point play and gets yeah. it to go. You know, that's, that's her type game. She's going to get bumped around a lot because she's on the ground so yeah. much. Uh, hustling on the defensive end. She'll yes. be okay. Yeah, I mean, look for her to do what she did a year ago, and that's also be among the Sunbelt leaders in rebounds, which you wouldn't think looking at her. A runner off the glass, too strong for the Golden Lions. Now here comes A-State trying to get a little spurt to close the half. Shidloska steps into a three, and it goes. Yep. Off the feed by Jada Stinson. Yep. Carolina Shidloska stepped into that one. Couple of threes here late for the Red Wolves. They're first of the night, and they're back within four. Yep. It's an 8-0 A State run, and they got a chance now with the shot clock off. Let's see what Matt Daniel wants to do with it. And he does, I think, now just want to get one shot. Red Wolves. Got the spurt they desperately needed late in the half. Stinson, shot blocked, stops play with seven seconds to go, and A-State will inbound. So. A-State's record a year ago. Trailing at the half. Coach Brown brings a little size in there to defend this inbound over these final 6.9 seconds. Try to take away the lob, and it basically worked. They deflected the inbound. Rodon gets it, and it's going to be called for a travel. So it's a good yep. sub there by Don Brown. Hey, great coaching move by Coach Brown to get some length in there and making it hard for them to get the inbounds pass. Undergo is probably one of the hardest places to inbound the basketball. So, barring something pretty dramatic, looks like it's going to be an 8-0 run for Arkansas State to close the half as that shot wouldn't have counted anyway. And the Red Wolves get a much needed spurt to close out the first 20 minutes. Eight straight points to end the half by Matt Daniels' team and UAPB leads it by four at the break. Halftime at First National Bank Arena, UAPB leading A State by four as we Welcome you back courtside to take a look at some of those first half numbers. Brad Bobo, C.J. Pepper with you. And, uh, part opening night, part kind of foul trouble. We saw 24 total players in this <laughs> game already. Yeah, man, again, you know, the players are just so enthused about getting out there and, and playing. They've been going against each other every day in practice. And so uh, you try to, you know, once you get out there and play, they got their jitters. So that's where a lot of the fouls are coming and a lot of the missed shots and rushing a lot on offense, man. Three players in this game already in double figures. A couple of them for UAPB, led by Shakoria Orr with a dozen to lead the way for the Golden Lions. Talk about her first half. Yeah, so she was just pulling up, first couple shots, hitting those mid-range jumpers, and she got her sweet spot up by the free throw line. And then she stepped out and hit a couple threes. And uh, the thing about her, since Kenderson hadn't been shooting, they've been going to her for the offense. So she did lead UAPB with a dozen, the same point total Morgan Wallace put out in the first 20 minutes. Hey, one of my favorite girls to watch is Morgan. She can get to the basket, and now she's finishing with her right or left hand. And the second half, you're going to see more of that uh, with John Washington coming back in the second half. So Wallace, 12 points, five rebounds, filling up the stat sheet as we've seen her do throughout her Arkansas State career as uh, – Arkansas State ended that first half on an 8-0 run, and uh, it was a much-needed run. A couple of different times they were down by 12. It was, and you could kind of see uh, UAPB getting a little tired and missing defensive assignments, and they were just open for those uh, shots. And so Arkansas State seeing the ball going in the bucket uh, those two times. Again, with their point guard coming in, you'll probably see them uh, make a run early in the second half. First half stats brought to you by Gamble Home, and one that really jumps out at you there is that number 12 in that column for Arkansas State. The Red Wolves 0 for their 
first 14 from the three-point line, but they hit two of their last three coming in in the midst of that 8-0 run, and it was Maddie Hatcher that came in and got him going with that first one. Yeah, that freshman came in and, uh, you know, hit that shot. And, once again, once they seen that ball go in from a three-point line, uh, they came back down and hit another three uh, back-to-back. And then, again, when they have their point guard come in, their best player, John Washington, I think when when she gets uh, in the offense, it's going, you're going to see a lot of um, baskets and been making it easier for them to hit those three-point shots. Continue to look at those halftime numbers. You know, UAPB got it done beyond the arc in right. the second quarter. In the first quarter, they made a living at the free throw line. They shot 16 in the half, but 14 of them in the first 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, and Arkansas State is going to have to play better on the defensive end if they want to win this game. Again, your first half numbers brought to you by Gamble Home as the teams come out and get ready for the second half, and we'll get ready for it as well. Can A-State keep the momentum of a late half surge into the third quarter? We'll find out right after this. Time to get the second half underway here in Jonesboro. And you know, a lot of times, CJ coaches are big on talking about the end of the half and the beginning of a half. Now, the Red Wolves certainly had the momentum at the end of the half. It's a big stretch coming up here out of the locker room. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, for both coaches, you want to really play well when the third quarter starts. A lot of times, the third quarter determines who's going to win and lose games. Well, the third quarter started, but the shot clock didn't. So, we'll knock four seconds off of that and let the Golden Lions inbound it. You got to give the referees props to just see all that stuff. While all the action is going, they're looking at clock and action. And it's now it's not a matter of it not starting. It's going to be a matter of it not working. So four more seconds came off. Hey, you do this six or seven times, you're going to have them late in the shot clock. <laughs> No doubt about it. The lob to the back door, and it's up and good for the Golden Lions. Oh, wow. Great coach. Hey, coach Brown drew up a great play right there. Caught the SU defense sleeping. Jaira Washington on the floor for the first time since way back in the first quarter, and she gets to the rim. Yeah, see, that, that's something they were missing in the first half. Again, your best player only played two minutes. Uh, first half, and Arkansas State now got their best play out on the floor. Let's see what happens now. There's a shot up and good for Trosty Totten. And UAPB has hit its first two shots. Now we've got a whistle in the backcourt and a foul against Kayla Walker, and that's going to be her fourth. But I, I see what Coach Brown is trying to do. She's trying to keep pressure on Jara so to kind of get it wear out. But, again, Jara's been on that bench the whole first half. So, I think, you know, that's, that goes in Arkansas State's favor. So, Kayla Walker was on the floor to start the third quarter. She quickly picked up her fourth. And now Joyce Kennerson's out there with her three fouls in the first half. Washington again into the paint. Up and under. Sam Grant with the bucket. <laughs> again, 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 she can get to the basket on almost anyone in the nation, I feel like. And so it's going to be, they're going to have to stop her from going to the basket if, if you pay B want to win this game. Well, Washington, a non factor in that first half with the two quick fouls. A State's lone preseason all Sunbelt pick gets two early buckets here. And the Golden Line lead again is four. There's Jackson with the steal. Shudloska pushing it ahead. Washington wanted to go to work. Instead, Wallace will as she was too strong. Got everything but the finish. Kenderson pushing the other way. Spin move. Too strong. Yeah, too strong. Again, b being away from the game for two years and then come out here and play in Division I basketball, hey, it's tough. Stinson off the feed from Washington. Couldn't get it to go in the corner. And that rebound controlled by Trosty Totten. So through the first two-plus minutes, the lead has stayed at four for UAPB. Is Jackson there with the box out on the missed three. 
Give it in to Trinity Jackson. She goes up and gets it to go with a foul. <laughs> and again, Trinity Jackson getting the ball down low, and she worked for that post up right there and went up strong. And one. Let's get another yeah, look at that. Going over her shoulder. Look, with the little hook, she's saying barbecue chicken. And one. So Orr with the foul, and we'll have an and one opportunity. But first, UAPB grabs a timeout. We'll take it with them. Just about two and a half minutes into the third quarter, it's a two point ball game in Jonesboro. Back here, Trinity Jackson did hit the free throw to cap the three-point play coming out of the timeout, but then look at Nisa Sam Grant as wide open as yes. she'll be in her career. So what had happened was Trinity uh, went out the game and they missed their defensive assignment, uh, not communicating there on the defensive end. Arkansas State got caught with that one that time. So momentarily was a one-point game. That bucket by Sam Grant pushes the UAPB lead back to three. Three minutes into this third quarter, and Jaira Washington again to the bucket. Yeah, again, man, it's, it's just hard to stay in front of her. She's very savvy at getting to the bucket. So Washington back out there. Peyton Martin is as well. And you see those two combined to score over 25 a game last year, and they're the second highest pair of returners in the Sunbelt Conference, uh -huh. second highest scoring returning duo in the league is there was another shot knocked down yeah. by Tyler Piper. So the screen was set. Um, John Washington, a girl set the screen. Peyton got to do a better job of getting out there on that screen, that hedge to uh, contest that shot. Piper now with 16 points to lead all scores and Kenderson tried to get herself going with that three came up off the mark. Here's Shidloska off the shovel feed from Stinson, and the three is good. Second three of the night for Carolina Shidloska, and we have a one-point game again at 49-48. You know, Shidloska, one of those players that just looks like a shooter. I could tell when she missed our first few that she was going to be okay. And there's an answer up and good by Totten, Trosty Totten. Hits from distance. She's in double figures with a dozen. The lead back to four. Now in transition, Kenderson somehow hauled that in and wow, gets the and one. Was a great play. Great play. She just kept, she paid attention to the ball, caught the ball, and got it up there. Great presence of mind for her to get the ball up there that fast. Didn't think she was even going to corral it, much less get it up on the rim and in as Wallace picks up her second personal. Well, the last few, she's been going to the hole and missing them, not looking them through, but that time she definitely looked it through. Great concentration. So Joyce Kenderson, the redshirt senior out of Port Arthur, Texas, making her return to the game after two years out. And she caps off the three-point play. Pushes the lead back to seven. And now they go... With a steal, Kenderson got it ahead to Bethea, who couldn't get a clean catch. Now on the run, shot too strong for Pete, but the Golden Lions you know, keep possession. Yeah, Arkansas State right now just getting out of hustle. And I believe Pete's going to be called for a travel. So turn it over to A-State. And an offensive foul against Jaira Washington to be her third. And that got the Golden Lions bench fired up. Yeah. Please, trust me, that's one of the players uh, UAPB wants out the game pretty fast. They don't want to see um, Jaira Washington. She's a matchup nightmare. Well, she has been here in the first half of the third quarter, which has been the most she's played tonight. Love getting physical with Kenderson out on the perimeter. Kenderson with the left, no. And Stinson shovels it ahead to Washington. Look out, here comes Jaira. And 
UAPB is probably glad that was called a hand check. Yep. As uh, Ashlyn Green picks up her second personal, third golden foul line of the third quarter, or the foul on the uh, golden lines of the third of the quarter, brings us to a break. UAPB has pushed its lead back up to seven. Each team shooting over 50% here in the third quarter. The Golden Lions have seen the Red Wolves get within one on two occasions, but they've got the lead back to seven here as we get back into play. Yeah, well, what happened was um, UAPB had two wide open three point shots and they knocked them down. Arkansas State got to do a better job of getting out on that three point line, contesting those shots. Talia rolled on, unable to hit from the high post. And look at Kennerson split defenders and finish with the left. And that was a great move. She had it in her right hand at first and then switched it over to her left. That was a great move by Kennerson. So lead now nine as Washington is guarded by Kennerson. Here's Wallace knocking down the three-pointer. That's a hand down, man down situation. Yeah, you know, Morgan is not known for that three-point shot, but she, from time to time, she can get out from out there and hit a couple. So the lead is six as we hit four minutes to go in the third quarter. That line drive three wouldn't go for Pyburn, yep. but Pete keeps it alive. Well, even though Orr missed that shot, Jara Washington has to contest those, that shot better. That was too easy of a look. Leah rolled on with her first personal. It's team foul number four on A State, and it sends Maya Pete to the free throw line. You see the seven wins last year for Don Brown's team. Six of them were in the SWAC. The year before she took over the job, they won two games in SWAC play. So she had him turned it in the right direction. And yep. If tonight's any indication, that trend could continue. She you know, they had that schedule last year. You know, we see SWAC teams play it a lot where, uh -huh. you know, they played 13 in a row on the road to start yeah. the year last year. That's tough yeah. on anybody. Yeah, and, and no doubt about it. But in, in saying that, too, now you start to see some of her players come in and uh, the way that she, she plays and her strategies on offense and defense. You're starting to see that. And they're playing well tonight. They've got a six-point lead on the road. Again, these two teams will turn right around and do it again on the 10th of December in Pine Bluff. You see schedules for teams in 2020 that we've never uh, seen yeah, before. Man, I, yeah. I mean, that's unreal, unreal. And then the thing about this, too, how about if you got four or five players that got, have COVID, you got to practice with seven or eight guys or women. You know, Stinson couldn't get the three to go. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a game-by-game -game case to see who's available. I mean, A-State, both of these teams, I guess, for that matter, came into this one with everybody available, but that's not going to be the case every night. Right, exactly. Inbounds will go to the Golden Lions down in the corner. Looks like uh, Shakuria Orr will be the inbounder. So Peyton Morgan on the last play, she contested that shot, and it was an air ball. That's how you contest a three-point shot. You got to really get out there. They had Sam Grant trying to post up Martin, but she stood her ground in there. Now they're still trying to get it to her. They must. They think it's a mismatch, but Martin stands her ground, and then there's going to be an offensive foul called on that on that division. I mean, they on called that it out of bounds. Yeah. That possession, though, defensively for Arkansas State was one of the best this game so far that they've had. Red Wolves have it. Down by six. We hit the three-minute mark in the third quarter, and Jaira Washington just got to the ten again. Eight points in the third quarter, and none of them have been more than two yeah. feet from the basket. I'm telling you, again, getting to the hole is one of her specialties. And Be sure to watch and look at her. She's going to start making – helping making shots for the other uh, players as well for Arkansas State. She's a great playmaker. She's going to get you an open look because the help better be coming. Yeah, no doubt about it. Because if she doesn't, she's going to score that easy bucket. Peyton Martin picked up her third foul. It's team foul number five, actually number four. So the next one will be the bonus. 
There was Etrosti Totten back into the lineup. Yeah. Uh, Coach Brown putting some shooting back in the game. Totten catches the inbounds. Pull up at the free throw line, and boy, yeah. you knocked that one down. <laughs> yeah, hey, she's, she's been hitting a lot of shots. Well, you called that one part. Brought a shooter in. She hits right off the inbounds, and now they're going to say, my love was on the sideline out of bounds. She hit that yeah. shot, too? Yeah, she hit so it, too. That's six points. <laughs> yes, That's six points. Is. Yeah. And the lead is six. She yeah, is. you know, that the situation like that counts. You know, Maya got to really be careful. Uh, but it's so hard. They didn't. You know, they made these three-point lines so much further. You started 20 feet now. It's out so much further now. Loves hit a couple of threes in this game that have been wiped out on turnovers. So she's two for two. Yeah. <laughs> and that's another three knocked down. This yeah. one by Shakuria Orr. And the lead once again is nine. Washington a deep three, and that one's way short. Yep. That's, that's not her game. That's not her game. Now, when she gets hot and going, she can hit a couple of those, but going to the basket is her game. So the Golden Lions, well, you tell you what, you got to give them a lot of credit. They yep. have not gone away. They got a chance to reclaim a double-digit lead here. Mm -hmm. Or in trouble. Got it to Bethea. That ball knocked away by Maya Love and saved in play by Jaira Washington. Here's Stinson out ahead of the pack for the layup. Again, that's what Arkansas State is good at, scoring off their defense. And especially when shots are not falling, they really need to score off their defense. Well, they got the defense turned into offense there and much needed bucket to trim that lead down to seven as we roll near a minute to go in the third quarter. Shot wouldn't go inside. Here's Wallace with the board. She's pushing it ahead herself. Love but a pass sort of between two players. Stinson unable to hit on the baseline, but Martin kept it alive. On the last two fast breaks, you see it was kind of hard for UAPB to get back. Let's just see if they're getting a little tired. Stinson left open off the feed from Wallace. Jumper short. Ball is loose. Now tied up in the possession area. We'll keep it with Arkansas State. Good hustle. As they Good untangle hustle. everybody. So, Nisa nice Sam Grant at the scores table. And we're going to have a little bit of a conversation yeah. by the, with the officials here. And you can tell, Stinson, she's, she's, she's a great player. You can tell that. But not playing the whole year and, you know, setting out the whole season again, man, that, that's just tough. So, uh, be, be, watch her during the year. She's going to have a good season. Just her first game back, I think she's just a little nervous. I think the conversation there was whether that was a change of possession or not. It was deemed not to be, so the shot clock will be at 20 for A-State. They'll treat it as an offensive rebound. As opposed to turning the shot clock off. Drop it down on the baseline to Martin. Turns into the paint and scores. Yeah. She's really good at she's really good at scoring on girls that's taller than her. She got make, created that space that time. She's given up five inches to yeah. the Sam Grant and but, took it right at her. But it was a perfect drop step. Closing seconds, Kenderson to the bucket. No, and a whistle and a late foul from up top. So even though that was a foul right there, Bobo, did you see how they closed out to get them off that three-point line? And then, you know, they had a contest down low, but that's going to be key for Arkansas State contesting those three-point shots since UAPB's been hitting a lot of them. Another key is Peyton Martin just picked up her fourth foul here with five seconds to go in the quarter. And Kenderson gets herself back to the free throw line where the first one's up and good. Coach Brown had a great game plan of attacking the basket, though. I mean, they got a lot of fouls from attacking the basket. Kenderson's in double digits with 11. Closing seconds of the quarter, Washington can get a long way in a little bit of time. Floater is up and 
She's going to be called for an offensive foul, which is going to be her fourth. Matt Daniel actually nodded his head in agreement. Yep. And so that is how the third quarter is going to end. In the final five seconds of the quarter, Martin and Wallace pick up their fourth fouls, and the Red Bulls have ten minutes left to wipe away a seven-point deficit in the season opener. You know, I, I see where the driver was going with this, but she had her teammate, number 10, Miss Stinson, in the corner wide open for the three-point shot. you got to go ahead and pass that ball. You don't get that foul as well. So she should have passed that ball in the corner wide open. That's what Stinson do is she's a great shooter. And it looks like there's been a, a review has been going on during this whole exchange during the quarters as you look at the Sunbelt scoreboard. Uh, teams opening up around the area, around the country. See UTA winning big as they start with a new head coach this year. South Alabama rolls over its crosstown rivals from Mobile. That was back on Wednesday, these finals, and one today, southeastern Louisiana trails with eight minutes to go, they're playing in Hattiesburg against Troy. Here, it's a seven-point UAPB lead. As we see Don Brown's team, you know, led by 10 early on last year, Arkansas State really made that a non-issue one, I believe, by 19. This time, when they used a second quarter run to take a double-digit lead, and even when A-State made a run at them in the half, they didn't go away. Yeah, so they've been playing great defense. Um, and the thing about it is you can tell these girls at UAPB, they're confident and feel like that they're the better team, and so they're playing extremely well. You see, we talked about her sort of making the roster in her own vision. 12 newcomers. They got players from 10 different states, two countries represented. They have a Canadian on the roster to go with the rest of those golden lines. Meanwhile, we mentioned the two transfers. We've seen a lot of Stinson and Roldan for A State. Six newcomers. They've actually got three different countries represented along with with the United States because you got Shidloska from Poland and we talked about Zainabu Cham. We saw a little bit the 6'6 newcomer out of Senegal to go yeah. along with the Americans on Matt Daniels roster. Got a little Sunbelt football tomorrow for you as A-State tries to snap a four game losing streak, which is the longest in two decades for a state or uh, anything longer would be yeah red bulls really need to win out to get into the bowl conversation of course there's not a win minimum but you start looking at who's got how many wins in the sun belt and a state really has three home games in three weeks to close out the regular season needing yeah. to win them all to get to six and then we get another chance to see jay adams the jonesboro high school product who has had a phenomenal senior season. Man, you know, that I, I'm so happy for him. I've been knowing him since he was a kid, come from a great family, uh, and it, he deserves it. Just a good kid. So it was a lot of conversation and a lot of time spent at the monitor during that break. Yeah. You see this team's numbers a season ago. Steals per game, they both were really good in that category. Red Bulls tops in the Sun Belt, but UAPB was in the top 20 in the country in that category, actually 24th in the country with the steals they had a year ago. John Ross got to really be careful with playing with four fouls. And Matt Daniel does leave her out there to start this third quarter. Getting to the rim and finishing underneath. That is Shakuria Orr. She's been scoring today. Now it's a nine point lead as Orr has 17. And a whistle stops play underneath. Foul charge to number five. Trusty Totten picks up her first personal. First foul of the quarter against. 
the Golden Lions, A State will inbound. Out high to Stinson. Now here's Shidlowska who's hit a couple of threes tonight. Gives on the baseline to Wallace. Shidlowska will let it fly. Good run out there by Orr who Great forced contest. the miss. Yeah, she contested this shot. And that's a, Kennerson's gonna get the call here as Matt Daniel thought Trinity Jackson was there. Yeah. It's her second and the first on A State. Great defense by Trinity Jackson uh, as a coach. You tell her don't do anything different. Sometimes just the referee just gives it to the other team. So Kennerson just two for eight from the floor. And again, she's playing her first game in three seasons, but she's seven out of 11 from the free throw line. Now make it eight out of 12. Sometimes it doesn't matter how you score them, as long as you score them. And the lead, once again, is 10. A State had gotten within one on a couple of different times in the third quarter, but UAPB's had an answer for every run, and the Red Bulls are going to need another one here in this final frame. You know, that's another thing that's different, too, uh, Bobo. Back in the day when you're down by 10 or 12, the crowd is behind you, you know, but now you don't have much of a crowd because of the six feet distance. Or hits again on the baseline. This one off the pull up. She's got 19. Stinson snowburning down on the other end. Caught it on the baseline, but couldn't get to the short jumper to go. Yeah. 12 point lead matches the largest of the night for UAPB. They had a 12 point advantage a couple of different times in the second quarter before the Red Wolves went on a run. And that's going to be a travel on Nisa Sam Grant. Yeah. Hey, she had. She moved over her feet that time, but uh, see what she was trying to do. But she got a little happy feet down there. So Washington again on the floor with her four fouls. Peyton Martin's on the A State bench with four. Wallace was going to thread the needle with that pass, yeah. but Matt Daniel, I believe, grabbed a timeout from the Arkansas State bench, yeah. and we'll step aside with them. Two minutes gone by in the fourth quarter, and for the third time tonight, UAPB is working with a 12-point lead. Back in Jonesboro, UAPB on the road, leading Arkansas State by a dozen. Largest lead of the night for the Golden Lions. And Matt Daniel grabbed a timeout, and Washington out of that timeout hits the left corner three. Hey, a great timeout by Coach. Come in and hit a three-point shot by John Washington. So Washington, who again was non-existent in the first half with foul trouble, has 11 in the second half. And then the Red Wolves use a little pressure to force the turnover. You know, Coach Daniel, I'm, I don't think he liked the offense that was being ran when he called the timeout, but he also was trying to stop the bleeding as well. So his team back within nine, off the turnover. Stinson takes a three that she wishes she hadn't. He could just see the look on her face as she turned around this way. Yeah. Hey, she, I'm pretty sure Memphis, her parents live close by, her family live close by. You ain't played ball in a year. She's just trying to have a good game out there. I hope it happens in Arkansas, in Arkansas as well. Arkansas State forces another turnover to get the ball back down seven with just under seven to go. Henderson reaching in there enough to slow Washington down as she was headed to the rim again. Drop it into Jackson. Turns to the middle of the paint and will head to the line. Almost every time that Trinity Jackson has got the ball down low, it's either been free throws or a score. Nisa Sam, Nisa Sam Grant has her fourth personal, so she'll sit down and look at Jackson go Great to work move. again. Great move. She actually was sandwiched that time. Yeah. So Jackson at the free throw line, and look, it's a big kid 
that you're perfectly fine going to the line because she's yeah. got such a nice shooting touch. She's really improved on her free throw shooting as well. Ben, right on cue. Yeah, we short yeah. on the first yeah. one here. <laughs> hey, that's how it happens. <laughs> So she's trying to split this trip and make it a six-point ball game. And she does. And here comes Peyton Martin back into the lineup. And Martin picked up her fourth foul with five seconds to go in the third. Yep. And Maya Peets back in there for Coach Don Brown's team. Great coaching move by Coach Daniels. What he's doing is he's running the press. Um, wanted some speed out there, so he, that's why he put Peyton Martin in for Trinity Jackson. Good contest by Jaira Washington, forced the miss by Walker. Here comes A State the other way. Jaira short on the three, and the rebound corralled by Totten. But Arkansas State now has plenty of time to to win this game. Yeah, you sure don't have to start taking yep. a bunch of threes. Stinson will take one open from the corner and hit the side of the backboard. And she's talking to herself on the way up the floor. And saw. But great that, hustle. Yeah, because. Great hustle. Because Jaira Washington was going to give that layup up. Right. She wasn't going to try to pay, we risk her fifth foul. So Stinson did get in there and make a play, and then Again, she makes another on the play. other end. You know, sometimes when you can't score the basketball, you got to find other ways to help your team win. Stinson did that on those two possessions. And it's actually, yeah, the second time we've seen her do that, come back from a bad shot and end up making a defensive play and getting an assist on the other end. Meanwhile, a little bit of a breakdown as nobody yep. found Kayla Walker. The lead is six. Shedlowska was yep. going to try to cut it in half, and then she sort of compounded things by coming in and committing a foul. Carolina Shedlowska with her first personal, second A-State team foul. And the Golden Lions will have possession nearing midway in the fourth quarter, still working with a six-point lead. But the lead has been as many as 12 here in the second half. A-State at this point is sort of slowly chipped away at it. Yep. They you know, just trying to grind and, and give themselves a chance to win. And again, Arkansas State, since they're not scoring the basketball with their shooting, they have to score on the, you know, from their defense. Drop it inside to Pyburn, who turns and scores again. Boy, Tyler Pyburn has had a nice night for UAPB. She now has 20. More importantly, she pushes the lead back to eight, and then there's a turnover. There's Kenderson and Wallace, three against three, and Wallace forced the miss, and then after they'd gotten the rebound, there's a whistle and a foul yeah, call. Yeah, it was a off the ball foul right there. Kind of pushed off to get the rebound right there. So Wallace did make the play, but then it's Shidlowska who picks up her second personal. And team foul number three against A-State. And actually, they're going to... Okay, I thought for a second, yeah, they were talking about the shot clock. It's going to go to 20. Sam Grant's on the floor with her four fouls. Baseline jumper wouldn't go for Pyburn this time, and A-State's got the board. Trailing by eight. They missed the shot, but Coach Brown drew up a good play right there. That was a great play. They had a great shot. Inside for Martin. Good catch on the baseline. That looked like it was headed out of bounds. Shedlowska from three. No, and the rebound comes to Kayla Walker. Just over four minutes to go, and now Coach Brown backs it out. She realizes time's on her side here. Yeah. Shot clock hits 10. Straight away, three rattles in for Pyburn. Tyler Pyburn with 23. You know, I'm telling you, this gym right here is a shooter's gym, so once you get the scoring and get confidence, hey, you're hard to stop in this gym right here. Five straight points for UAPB, the lead back to 11, and now time definitely getting short for A-State. Wallace to the rim. Couldn't get a call, and Sam Grant has the rebound. And right now, 
A State is about in a must stop situation. Mm -hmm. Kenderson looking for a dagger and she knocks it down. Joyce Kenderson had had a slow night from the field, but she scored too many buckets in her career. Yeah. When it came time to hit a big one, yeah. she did. She hit the clutch basket. That's, it's going to make it, that basket right there is going to make it hard for Arkansas State to come back with the win. But look at that. Martin did, look, Martin did not hedge on that shot right there, so it's wide open. Arkansas State hadn't done a great job uh, defending the re three point shot. So Joyce Kenderson hits her first three of the night. She's now one out of four from the three point line. And Arkansas State now trailing by its largest deficit of the night at 14. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. I, I, UAPB, I give them, a, they played a great game, I had a great game plan. They're knocking down shots. Uh, they're ac actually acting like it's their home gym. <laughs> they're hitting their three point shots. Well, three-point line really has been the difference in the ball game because UAPB, 10 out of 24 from deep, they're yeah. shooting 42%. Meanwhile, A-State just 5 out of 29, as you see the Red Wolves' upcoming schedule. That trip to Pine Bluff on the 10th is Arkansas State's only non-conference road game uh, before Sunbelt play kicks off mm -hmm. at the new year. We'll be with you on Wednesday for a matchup here against SIU Edwardsville. Right now, the Red Wolves can't think about SIU Edwardsville. They got all they want and more from UAPB is trying to come into Jonesboro and leave with a season opening victory. But I, I think Arkansas State is going to, I mean, either way, win or lose, they'll go back and watch the film on this game and see how they didn't defend the three-point shot well. Uh, don't worry, Coach will have them ready. Coach Daniel will have them ready to go. Here's Washington dropping into Shidlowska. She'll kick it to Stinson, who needs to hit that, and it's off the mark. You can just tell Stinson's confidence is just not there right now. And, and yeah, it's a shot that she needed to take, uh -huh. but didn't want to. Didn't want to. You can tell it. <laughs> and we go under three minutes with the lead at 14. Kenderson wants to, as she drew a little contact as the no call. Now she gets it blocked, sticking in there still, knocked to the deck, draws the foul. and But uh, so UAPB is just out of hustling Arkansas State right now. They want that ball. They, you see they're about to win this game, and, and they're hu out hustling Arkansas State. Yeah, they're definitely sort of tasting blood in the water. Yeah. Stinson will sit down. Maddie Hatcher comes in because the Red Wolves need shooters. A-State had missed its first 14 threes of the game before Hatcher hit one late in the first half. Kenderson long on the first free throw. Red Wolves now five for 30 from three. We mentioned they took 649 threes last season. Three times they shot 30 or more. Wow. And they've already taken 30 in the season opener. Well, hey, listen. Again, they're not going to miss that many shots their next game, I'm sure. Coach, you have them ready to go. And that'll be it for Nisa Sam Grant as Jaira Washington Got Byer on the way to the rim, so Sam Grant will pick up her fifth foul. I think one mistake Arkansas State made early was they started out just shooting so many threes. It's good to always see that ball going in a hole first. Uh, most shooters will tell you they like to hit a layup first or go to the free throw line before they just start shooting threes. Sam Grant, you know, not a big offensive weapon. She only took two shots, went one for two from the field, hit a couple of free throws, but she grabbed ten rebounds. And she fouls out here with 2.26 to go. Played a great game and blocked some shots. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, again, it may not start on, on the stat sheet of ch chain shots. but Yeah, she was a force in there. She was a force down low. So, Jaira Washington to the line, I believe, for the first time. And she's short on the first free throw. And this is the, this is the one sort of offensive area where there's a little bit of room for improvement for Washington, especially – as much as she'll have the ball in her hands mm -hmm. late in games, the ability to step up and hit free throws, and she knocks one down there. She definitely made a jump in that respect from her freshman year to her sophomore season. It's one for two here, and it's a 14-point UAPB lead. And again, Coach Don Brown says, let that clock run. Yep. 
Because they feel like, I mean, look, if they can get the clock to run, they don't have to score again. And, and look what Coach Brown did. Put in all guards and all her, all her good shooters, all her good free throw shooters she has in the game right now. Kenderson's deep three off the mark as Maddie Hatcher is going to be fouled yep, coming into the out. front court. And that's going to be Kayla Walker's fifth personal. Four team fouls, so A State will inbound it, but Walker becomes the second player in as many possessions to be disqualified. As she sits down with four points on the night. She played great defense with Scrappy and uh, has helped UAPB defense on the defensive end. Hatcher. Lob it into Jackson. She spins to the paint. Face the they basket, have not yeah. stopped her all game long. I, I think Coach is going to look at that for next game as well, getting her the ball down low. Jackson's in double figures with a with a 10 now. Yeah. To go along with six rebounds. But I think 10 points probably off five, six shots. Uh, that Actually, she just two out of three from two out of three. field. So yeah. She's gotten to the free throw line nine times. Yeah, that efficiency right there is – so what happens is you get the ball down low, now you freeze the defense. So now you can kick out to your shooters to have a better shot. So a timeout called by UAPB is Coach Brown's team 95 seconds away, perhaps from a win. Took them 10 games to get in the win column last year. And they were playing, even, and I know the roster changed a lot, but you know, they started 0 for 9. They played 13 games on the road to start the yeah. year. But you look at their last seven, and they alternated wins and losses. So they went three and four coming down the stretch, showed a little momentum, and they've taken it into the season opener here. They have. It. These girls can shoot the bat. They can score the basketball. They defend well. Uh, they're quick. They're long. So I'm that, Coach Brown did a, a great job recruiting. Uh, but that, this program is on the rise. And that's a big part why that player they brought in right there, Joyce Kennerson. As they clear it out and let Totten go to work, and she yeah, scores with a foul. But see, when your four, your four, your power four can bring a big out, I mean, it's just hard for a big to guard. Um, somebody can handle the ball like that and can shoot it. So, Trosity Totten. To the free throw line. Looking to complete the three point play. She knocks it down. There's 17 out of 26 from the line are the Golden Lions. Yep. And they can sense the wind is headed their direction. And I tell you what, they haven't quit playing either. No, no, they're still playing hard. I mean, they took it to the bucket on the offensive end down there knocking loose balls away on the other end. and They're playing. You can tell you yeah. APB, they wanted this game. Yeah, you sure can. Totten, by the way, 17 for her after that three-point play. And they've got four in double figures. Yeah, that's what you call it. Just a solid 17 points. You wouldn't have thought that. 17 apiece for Totten and Orr. Kenderson now with 16, and then Pyburn, who hit five threes in the game, right now leads everybody with 23. But the thing, and the upside for Arkansas State is whenever you lose a game like this, first game, uh, you usually come back, play a lot harder, and I think they're going to play pay way more attention to detail on the three-point shot. They did not, again, did not defend a three-point shot very well at all and not just the, the guards the bigs as well they got to help the guards when those screens come final minute well, they're still firing from yep. deep but you see you see that trini jackson contested the three-point shot that time and made a difference so a state will have it as again, the Red Wolves will drop their home opener for just the second time in the last 20 seasons. And now Matt Daniel uses a timeout here in the final 49 seconds, 30-second yep. timeout. Is, well, look, you're not going to win the game, but yeah. if you see something you want to address and correct, 
Still need to get that done. See, that, that's what the good coaches do. Because uh, they're going to be in a situation where the game is going to be a lot closer and maybe another situation happens. So this is a teaching experience, what Coach Daniel is doing right now. Also gave him a chance to get Halani Cantone, the freshman point guard, back into the game. Plus we see uh, Jordan Brown check back in. And we see Zainabu Chomb in as well. So they're out there with Morgan Wallace and Maddie Hatcher. You see Brown right in front of us will inbound it. Inbounds to Cantone. Had to play some first half minutes when Washington picked up two quick fouls. Mm -hmm. And then there's a turnover. Yep. So 10 second difference between the clocks here as we're going to see Pyburn check back into the lineup. And UAPB is going to have a happy little bus drive back down South Central Arkansas. Foul inside against Jordan Brown, and it'll be free throws coming up. But I, I cannot see seven teams better than this team in the SWAC. Uh, this is a good team, and I think Coach Brown, uh, if they stay healthy, you know, of course, this year with COVID-19, that's going to count a lot. But they're going to do some damage in the SWAC for sure. But she, you know, she coached at Prairie View in the SWAC. Mm -hmm. You know, her, her 2014 Prairie View team won the SWAC tournament, played in the NCAA tournament. So, I mean, this she's won. Not only she's yep. won, she's won in this league. After a year in Pine Bluff, she knew the players she needed to go league to, to go get to try to win in this league, and she overhauled the roster and, and certainly going to sort of reap the rewards of that here on the opener. Yeah, hey, that, they played a great game. And certainly, meanwhile, your Arkansas State. I mean, they, the, one, the first thing it says, look, you can't give up 85 points a night no and win anything. I, no doubt about it, but I'm, I'm giving you a, PB a lot of credit because here's the thing. They can guard you man to man. They can guard you in a zone. Uh, they can do a lot of things, and they can score the ball. Uh, cool. That's going to be a tough team uh, to play. They scored plenty here tonight as the final seconds tick away on a season opening win. Another new look here is, look, you won't see the handshake line. Teams will sort of wave at each other oh, wow. and go on about their business. And UAPB handled its business here tonight with an 85-68 win against A-State. We will uh, tell you all about it right after these words. Back in Jonesboro where UAPB is come in and rained on Arkansas State's mm -hmm. opening night parade to the tune of an 85-68 win here in this one. Again, the Red Wolves trailed by 12 in the first half, got it within four at the break, got as close as one a couple of times in the mm -hmm. third quarter, but Pine Bluff, when it needed to, hit some shots and then kept the Red Wolves from making a late run. Yeah, they did that, and what, was, what Arkansas State is good at doing is getting a lot of steals and scoring off those steals. When Arkansas State got the steals, um, what UAPB made sure they didn't they didn't score. So they did play great defense. Golden Lions with four players in double figures, but they're led by our player of the game tonight, Tyler Piber, in a game high of 23, and she really got him going in that second quarter. Yeah, man, she could shoot it. She could score from the outside, and she went to the whole inside. She was just doing it all over um, the court tonight. She had a great game. Mentioned 23, 5 of 10 from the three. Overall, UAPB hit 10 of 26 from distance. They outscored Arkansas State 30 to 15 on the three-point line. Pyburn, a big part of the reason why, and she's a big part of the reason why the Golden Lions have opened the season with a win here. As you take a look at some of the final stats, Red Wolves, again, look at that three-point percentage, 16%. Yep. As uh, Matt Daniels' team goes 5 of 31 from deep. Yeah, then, yeah, just 36% to 44%. It's just hard to win games uh, when it's that much different. Well, look, I mean, they shot a better percentage. They out-rebounded them by five, had four more assists. You know, they doubled them up on the three-point line. So, I mean, and 
just about every statistical category, yep. UAPB had the advantage, including the one that matters most, the score column, where they pick up the win in this one to go to 1-0 and as your final stats brought to you by Gamble Holmes. So for Matt Daniels' team, it's sort of back to the drawing board as they'll get ready to host SIU Edwardsville on Wednesday, a game for a game we'll have for you here. So for C.J. Pepper, I'm Brad Bobo saying so long from Jonesboro where the final score again tonight is UAPB 85 and A-State 68. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and are archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. <laughs>